Today I want to share with you from the Gospel of Luke, as we did last week in the sixth chapter, I'm going to be moving on to uh, verse 27 through 38. Luke chapter 6, hear these words. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. And if someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you. And if anyone takes what belongs to you, don't demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, What credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies. Do good to them and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, because He is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For this is the measure you use. It will be measured to you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Today, as I share with you, on the topic of the blessed life. I have to admit, this text is one of the most demanding texts that I find in Scripture. There is such a high letter of expectation set here. that Sometimes when you live out your your life trying to be a faithful person, you find yourselves maybe in the quandary of going, say what? And do what? How? How is that even possible? Now, if you find yourself in that situation, well, you're not alone. As I've said, this is, this is not easy. The expectation that's been placed on us as believers in Christ Jesus to be examples of the faith and to love as Jesus loved and to be a person of faith as Jesus was a person of faith, to be grace-filled and merciful as Jesus was grace-filled and merciful, let us understand a high bar has been set for us. And we will spend our lives seeking to do all that we can to live in accordance to the teachings of the Holy Scripture. Now, I am not saying this is easy, and, and when I say that, that I, I, I struggled with this text is an understatement. As I was telling the children this past Friday... Uh, Barbara and I, I I had doctor's appointments in Parkersburg and Charleston on Friday, and we decided to stay over because we have not had an opportunity to watch or attend uh, uh, our grandson's basketball, high school basketball games. And uh, he had one last home game, and we decided we'd stay over and watch the games, the JV and the varsity. JV went fantastic. We were excited. Chance got to play. He, um, uh, he, he scored a couple of points. Uh, they, 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 they beat Herbert Hoover. Um, good game. 
Yay! Then the varsity game started. And it was another story. The varsity team had it together for Herbert Hoover. Now the sidebar of this is, we had no idea. I, I have, I, I wear a down jacket during the wintertime. It's kind of a medium blue, worn Duke blue kind of thing. And I had a blue fleece on and a blue shirt on, all kind of, you know, about the same shade. Barbara had on a blue something. Here we were sitting in with the Nitro Wildcat fans, and they're red and black. Herbert Hoover is the same color blue that we were wearing. And it was like, oh, this is not good. And if you haven't been to a high school basketball game in a while, you're in for a rude awakening. There was no love there. It wasn't aimed at us, but I absolutely was taken back by the number of people that, whose mouths were filled with vitriol and hate toward the referees and the other players. I mean, they were screaming, cussing, you, you name it. it, it I, I was like, this is not safe. The people got into it that, and, and to say there was no love is an understatement. And I'm, I'm listening to all of this. The whole time I'm getting more anxious because I knew we had to go out in the hallway. The uh, city police had already had to come over and, and force the, the, the Herbert Hoover fans back up into the sta sta stadium and the bleachers um, because they had encroached out on the floor and, and the, uh, uh, the, the ref was trying to force them back. And I mean, they were up by 20. Didn't make sense to me. None, none of this made sense. It's not the environment that I'm accustomed to. I'm more accustomed to a more sedate, calm, rational group of people. You know, dealing with people that seem to have common sense. But there was just no common sense to this. Screaming at a referee to retire because he's middle-aged. And he wasn't calling the way that, uh, that, that they felt he should be calling. I mean, there were, three, there were three refs on that. Brandon, I get it, dude. I would not want to be on that court at all, having to make the calls and then having the booze from the, from, from the fans. And what we've got here on our Upward program, I'm telling you folks, is a gift. When I measure it too, what I saw and experienced in a high school basketball game, high school, none of them are going to be playing at the college level. And definitely none of them are going to be professional. It's a game. Yet, as soon as that game was over and everybody was out, it just seemed like, oh, okay, life went on. But they spilled their hate. They spilled their... Their, their, their vile remarks. And I was just saddened, overwhelmed. Well, when we look at this text and we measure this, we can say, well, those, those folks were just the end of the game and that's, that's really not a reflection of who they really are. And I would say not probably is a reflection of exactly who they are. They get drawn into the moment. They get filled with passion. Things don't go their way, and suddenly they're no longer living in a way that they should live or doing the things that they should do. This text and living the blessed life can be quite a challenge. It's like a 5,000 piece puzzle that starts as a pile of small pieces that when you look at it can be daunting. Some of you who are puzzle people, you may look at it and go, 5,000, that's nothing. I've done a 10,000. I've done 3D. 
fantastic. The fruit of the intensive labor of working on that puzzle typically ends up in a beautiful picture that is whole and complete. Ah, as well as the feeling of accomplishment. I did it. I did it. That's what I want us to feel about this text and the life that we've been called to live. You see, the Common English Bible version starts this text out in this way. But I say to you who are willing to hear, I love the way that that's translated, I say to you who are willing to hear. If we want to be Christ-like, to love, to live, and to be what Christ wants us to be, there has to be a willingness to hear. I can say all kinds of things. I mean, the Spirit can speak all kinds of things to us. But we can be involved in so much chaos in our lives, in and around us, that the chaos becomes so loud that we don't hear the voice of God. Then suddenly we are left with this confusing noise that keeps us from hearing the voice of God calling to us, be at peace, love one another, do as I have done. I say to you who are willing to hear, what a unique way of relaying the importance of what's coming next. You see, the foundational concept of the Christian movement is unconditional love. That's the foundational block. Everything else is built on our ability to love. And love does not mean that we ignore spiritually unhealthy behaviors, but is a call to those who believe in Jesus to love. Love even those who are difficult to love. Have you dealt with a difficult person lately? You see, the blessed life is based on a conscious effort to live in a very decisive, meaningful way. Jesus clearly states the qualities and actions that are unique identifiers of the people who are of faith who are living the blessed life. We are to, listen to this, bless, pray for, give generously, and treat others equitably. Man, now that's a tall order. A difficult and challenging passage for the day, isn't it? Love your enemies. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. This is a call to forgive. How easy or difficult do you find it? And maybe this is a question that we should all ponder quite significantly. How easy or difficult do you find it to love your enemies? Did you hear me? How easy or difficult do you find it to love your enemies? Perhaps there's a particular person or a situation that comes to mind at the moment when I mention that. You see, it's not in our human nature to act in this manner. But this is the way of Jesus. In our human nature, it is about getting wrapped up in the moment, taking something that is as innocent as a basketball game and the competition and the skill and teaching our, our players how to, to develop their skill and be better at the game they love. Our nature is to scream at the ref, to use vitriol tones and language that is inappropriate to express our dissatisfaction when things don't go our way. That's what's in us. 
But Jesus says, control that inner self. Don't let that inner self be what it can be. Override, overcome your human nature to act in a new manner. Think about it. Are these easy things to accomplish? Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps or strikes you on one cheek, offer the other. If someone takes your coat, give them their shirt also. Give to everyone who asks. And by the way, don't demand things back. And treat others in the same way that you want them to treat you. Huh. All of these are traits or acts are strong signals of the unending, unquenchable love that has been shown to us through Jesus' obedience to the cross. Now the same is asked of us. Now the same is asked of us. There is no greater example in all of history that teaches more about the way of the blessed life than Jesus Christ and his teachings from what most would call the Sermon on the Mount. We just read from Luke's text on the blessings and the woes last week. Now we're looking at Jesus' desire for us to live the blessed life. Since he taught us how to love unconditionally by example, we're to give the, the, the following instruction on how to live a part of this distinctively Christian life. You see, the way of love is an important marker of our faith, and Jesus raises a significant issue when he says, love even your enemies. Here are the common sense instructions that we find in verse 35 and 36. Let me get my eyes. But love your enemies. Do good to them and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Wow. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Now I'm sure that you can agree that it's easy to love one another in the confines of this sanctuary. Right? But let's admit that it becomes more of a challenge to love those outside of the confines of this building. Especially those who want to oppose us those that want to take advantage of us, those that want to silence us. There's a part of me that says, silence me, try it. I'll get even louder. But then there's another part of me that says, what would be the loving response? You see, to love only those who love you, Jesus raises the question, what good does that do? How does that further the kingdom of God? Well, let's dive a little deeper. Loving all. Hmm, loving all. Jesus is saying to love the difficult ones as well. And we've all experienced difficult people in our lives, right? Yeah. We've dealt with difficult people. Maybe we've been that difficult person. You ever thought about that? But he also said doing good. Some of us have never been the difficult person. Some of us have always been just joyful and happy and easy to get along with. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I know a few of those. They're good people. They're holy people. They're people who have a mark on them that, wow, I admire. But doing good. Sometimes it is just easier to say no to that person who's begging on the street 
than it is to reach in your pocket and give them a dollar. Huh. No, it's real easy. I found myself using that word quite a bit to here quite lately. And lending without expectation of a return. Mm. These are just not characteristics of the world in which we live. But these are qualities of God's kingdom people. Folks, the blessed life involves an intentional effort to demonstrate that we are loved and forgiven people. People who are compassionate rather than critical. People who treat others with generosity, grace, and love. But loving someone doesn't mean that you find excuse for their behaviors. Yet, there are four more pieces of this puzzle that we started out with that when connected presents a beautiful scene. Jesus also said, don't judge. And you won't be judged. Don't condemn. And you won't be condemned. Wow. That whole crowd of folks... And I'm sorry. That whole group Friday night, I'm sorry. Because when I left that place, I was convinced, you're all going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me, Lord, for judging and condemning. Forgive. And Barb's just giving me the look. I just got the look. <laughs> Forgive. And you will be forgiven. Give. And it will be given to you. Hmm. Those four pieces. In each case, even more can be said. Judge? Well, that's reserved for God. It is the measure of one's willingness to live the blessed life to not judge. Condemn? Again? That is God's decision as to who will be separated from the eternal reward of unity and peace in the kingdom of God and who will not. Not my job. Forgive as God does for us. God has forgiven us. In turn, we must do the same for the other. Admittedly, there are some really what I call EGR people out there. Extra grace required. <laughs> yeah. So let's give. And give generosity. Generosity is a benchmark of the people of God. I truly believe that once we do this, paying careful attention to the qualities and characteristics of the blessed life, the puzzle will be completed and we will hear those words, job well done, my good and faithful servant. There are so many benefits obtained in the blessed life. My prayer is, is that each of us will reap the greatest fruit for our willingness to labor in love as Jesus taught us to love, to forgive as Jesus forgave himself, to give as Jesus offered himself up for our salvation, and to forgive so that others may be released of the trespass and the cost of that trespass against them. So let's go out and let's love even the EGRs. And I'll try to do the same myself. Because I'm with you in pursuit of living this blessed life. Amen? And amen.